Most of the time, the data needed is imported. Such imports often include the table definition. Sometimes the tables are created and must be defined. That's the case in the following slides. This slide shows the create table command format. The words create and table are reserved words in SQL. The command includes table name. Inside parentheses, it includes column names or field names. The data type parameter specifies the type of data the column can hold. Data types are specified on the web, but the most common data types are variable character, integer, float, date, and text. Always consult the web for exact data types allowed in your implementation of SQL code, as there are variations in different implementations. Cast and convert commands can change data from one type to another, but there are many exceptions where the data cannot be converted. For example, to convert text to integer, one has to make sure that all entries in the field in the text fields are digits and not letters. The patient attributes are shown in this slide and are assumed to be first name, last name, date of birth, email address, including street name, street number, city, state, and zip code. First name is a string of maximum size 20. Let's, last name is a string of maximum size 50. These are not reasonable maximum lengths. Many names and last names will exceed these sizes, but we are just trying this for an example. City and phone numbers are entered as text. Zip code is integer and not decimal, floats or real numbers. Date of birth is obviously a date. Note that George and Jill Smith might be living in the same place. Note that states are entered in different ways, sometimes referring to Virginia by its abbreviation and other times spelling it out. Note how the letter L in McLean is sometimes capitalized and other times not. Note for some phone numbers, the area code is in parentheses and for others not. All of this variability in data entry can create errors in data processing, and these variations must be corrected before proceeding. Here is a code that can create a, the patient table. Note that field names are put in brackets because they contain spaces. Also note that the hashtag before the table name indicates that the table is a temporary table, which will disappear once the SQL window is closed. Note that the primary key is automatically generated as an integer that's aggregated by one every time a new record is entered. The provider attributes are assumed to be, to be the first name, text of size 20, last name, text of size 50, whether they are board certified, a yes-no value, date of hire, telephone in text format, and email in text of size 75. Employer's ID number should be the primary key for the table. This slide shows the first three providers. Note that one of the patients, Jill Smith, previously described in the patient table, is also a provider. The following shows the code to create the provider table in SQL. Creating table command organizes the fields in providers table. Note that patient ID is generated automatically as an integer starting with one and increasing by one each time there is an entry. In SQL, there is no yes-no field, but the closest data type is a bit type, which assigns it a value of 1, 
zero or null. Here is the code that will create this table. The encounter has patient ID as integer, provider ID as integer, diagnosis as text of size 50, and date of encounter. The table also includes an ID as a primary key, which starts at 1 and increments by 1 each time there is an entry. Each encounter has its own ID number, and that's different from the patient or provider ID numbers. Patient ID is a foreign key in the encounter table. It can be duplicated as when the same patient has multiple visits. Provider ID is also a foreign key in the encounter table, but a primary key in the provider table. This key connects the encounter to the provider table. It can have duplicates as when the same provider sees different patients. The encounter table connects visits to patients and provider tables. This code creates the encounter table with its related primary and foreign keys. The patient and the encounter table share this field and that's why the two are connected. The provider and the encounter table share this field and that's why they are connected. This graph shows how the encounter table connects patients and the provider tables. Every patient shows only once in the patient table, but can show many times in the encounter table. Similarly, every provider shows only once in the provider table, but can show many times in the encounter table. Now that we have created the three tables and their relationships, we can start putting down data into them. The syntax for inserting values into the field is provided on the web. The syntax is also shown in this slide. The two words insert into are reserved words. The values must be inserted into an existing table with specified fields or column names. Values is also a reserved word. It instructs the server that data will follow within the parentheses. Data are inserted with each column value separated by comma. This provides how the three row of data are inserted into the patient table. Each row of data is entered into a separate parentheses. Within each parentheses, the data are provided in order of listed columns. Did you notice that the street name, street number, and state were entered as null values. Note that null values specification is done without a code. Inserting a blank is not the same as null values specification. Also note that the patient ID was not entered at all. The software will assign a unique number for patient ID. It will automatically increment by one. We do not need to enter it. Finally, note that the text fields are in quotes, dates are in quotes, but numbers and null values are not. Putting the null value in quotes will enter it as a text, which defeats the purpose. Provider and encounter tables are created in a similar fashion by using the create table and insert value commands repeatedly. Once all three tables have been created, then a relational database has been specified and Microsoft SQL Management Studio can be used to analyze the data across all three tables. Now that we have shown you have to, how to create a table, it's important to also learn how to delete it. The reserve words drop table accomplishes this goal. If the table does not exist, the command will create an error that you can ignore. Create table and insert values are important features for Microsoft SQL Server.